this volcano roll. Did I tell you how big these rolls are at this restaurant? These are some of the most monstrously big rolls that I've seen in a restaurant. Aloha from Honolulu. Almost 10 million people visit this city each year. It is undoubtedly one of the biggest tourist destinations in the world. Known for its lovely beaches, fun activities, and great food. Have you been to this city? Hey there, this is Steve from Rockstar Eater, and in this episode, I'm gonna be taking you on my 100-hour journey to Honolulu, Hawaii. In this documentary, I'm gonna show you the best foods you can eat and the best sights to see when you visit Honolulu. So get ready for an epic viewing experience because this is the biggest Honolulu food and travel video you're gonna find on YouTube. And if you're new to this channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell because I post these food and travel videos weekly you don't wanna miss out on. So go ahead, do that right now. And with that being said, let's go to Honolulu. Day one begins by walking down Kalakaua Avenue, which is the busiest street in Waikiki. If you wanna see the Waikiki beach and a bunch of nice shops and restaurants, then this is the street that you certainly need to be walking on. For example, you can walk into shops like this, in which they have a lot of cool gifts, I guess. I feel like whenever I'm bored, I always end up walking into these kind of convenience stores and gift stores because there's just so much to see. You can get your refreshments and your drinks, and then of course you can get your merchandise. And of course the street is also filled with a lot of hotels, like very nice high-end hotels. So if you got money, you could definitely be a high roller here, but it's by the beach, so of course it's going to be expensive. There's a lot of people walking around here, even during a non-touristy time of the year. It just shows how popular Waikiki is all year round. Have I been missing out on something this whole time? And if you guys are looking for somewhere to eat on Kalakaua Avenue, this is definitely a spot to check out called Sticks Asia. This is a new Asian food court that recently opened up and there are about 17 different Asian food shops in there from Japanese to Korean, Chinese, Singapore, you name it. So yeah, let's go check it out. So I just entered from Kalakaua and then I'm heading in the north direction. There are foods of all kinds. I passed by an udon shop and then to the left that is a sushi shop called Sushi Matsuri. And then this is the center of the food court. As you can see, it is quite a few stories high so this is kind of like the basement level. Got green tea. And then to your right, this is a onigiri, which is rice ball section. And then there's uh, quite a few more down there. But then if you turn here, this is kind of like where it ends. We have uh, ramen. And one of the things you're gonna notice is that there's a lot of noodle shops here, like Japanese, Chinese style noodles. What do you think? Looks pretty nice, huh? And here is a place that you should go if you like soba noodles. This is uh, Shingen, one of the popular spots here. Okay, I'm gonna check it out. This restaurant is known for their soba or udon noodles. You could get it cold or hot, so I'm gonna get this one. Lunch, 1880. I haven't had soba in a long time. I'm so excited. Oh yeah, and it comes with a side of the tendon, which is shrimp and vegetable tempura with the sauce over rice. It really looks like something I've had in Japan as well. Soba noodles, I don't know why I don't eat them more often, but I really should because I really like it. That is a super big thumbs up. I love soba noodles, these cold buckwheat noodles because it's refreshing. And then here's something that I also like just as equally since I'm into fried food. That shrimp has such a good bite to it. This is a really good combination. Even when you go to restaurants in Japan, you'll see meals like this as well. Okay, so this is something I've never seen in Japan before. Okay, I think I could kind of taste that ube flavor and then there's also this sukiyaki beef that's on top of it 
I can already tell this is a restaurant that I would come back to again and again because it just tastes so clean, it's fresh, it's, it's light. Oh, I love this place. Yeah, you definitely need to come to this restaurant, Shingen, especially if you love Japanese food. Later that night, I headed over to Rakahula, which is by far the best luau I've been to in Honolulu. Not only was the AYC buffet surprisingly solid, but they had this awesome musical performance afterwards, which alone is worth the price of the admission. Here is an attraction in Waikiki you simply cannot miss. Whoa! I haven't gotten these in such a long time. And this is, uh, it's fresh by the way, I feel it. Yeah, it's a real lay. One of the advantages of the VIP package is that you get to get seated first, you go up to the buffet line first, and when you go into the theater, you get seated first. So this is Cheyenne right here. She's gonna be taking photos for everybody. This is a separate cost, but everybody has an opportunity to get a photo at this table. Three, two, one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Have a great night. That was fun. Ooh, is this a pineapple? Yeah. Yeah, fresh cut. Okay, right at your table. While I'm waiting for the buffet, I guess everybody is kind of getting seated, and you can start off with some fresh old pineapple. It's like candy sweet. Oh, it's very good. And like I said, it comes with the Mai Tai. You can get alcoholic or non-alcoholic as part of your meal. Wow, very fruity. It's been a long time since I've had a Mai Tai. And I wanna tell you guys that the VIP package is not the only one here at Rockahula. They have different packages. So I would suggest go on the website to see which one best fits your need. But I think you should go with the VIP because you get a lot for your money. So the time has come for the all-you-can-eat buffet. I see about 15 really awesome selections here. And it's a good thing that they do label everything so you know exactly what you are getting. This is the butter along with some bread. What kind of bread is it? Freshly baked taro rolls by Elvin's Bakery. Okay, that sounds pretty good. All right. And then we have some veggies for all the uh, veggie lovers. Hawaiian mixed greens with grape tomatoes. Be sure to get some of this. And then you have two dressings, the house-made dressing, and then we have sesame dressing. Nice. And then here is limu tofu poke. Okay, that's pretty cool. I don't think I've seen this before. I'll, I'll try it. And then we have the homemade lomi lomi salmon. Oh, this is salmon. Okay, I'll try that too and the island style macaroni potato salad and then we also have some steamed white rice all your carbs you see fried noodles a lot of it and then got some passion fruit roasted voila sweet potato i love the contrasting color purple and gold and then we're getting heavier so this is the macadamia crusted fish of the day with pickled ginger and let's see, pickled ginger, uh, some sort of a sauce looks like. And then teriyaki glazed chicken. I love that steam smell. This is pretty much like catering style buffet, a little bit more upscale. Oh, <laughs> I'm getting so hungry. But there's more at the other station, the carving station. And that right there is the whole suckling pig. Look at that. Wow, it is big. Look how crispy that skin looks. And right here, we also have USDA Choice Top Round Grade Roast Beef with Black Sea Salt. And it looks like they also have a drink station too. They have the Kona Blend Coffee and then hot water. And then this is uh, like the sugar and cream and all that stuff. Cups, obviously, and then ice water. And I think this is the first time that I'm trying a uh, Lomi Lomi salad. Almost kind of looks like Mexican pico de gallo. Oh, fish. Okay, I love fish. That's like hardcore scissors right there. Oh, I love the skin. What do you think, guys? Do you think I took a little bit too much off of the buffet line? Everything up there looks so good. Oh, man. And I had a big lunch, too. I don't know how I'm going to do this, to tell you the truth. Well, I like that salad dressing. Oh, good choice. Yep, you always have to have your veggies to balance out this meal that has a lot 
of meat. They do have some vegetarian options on the menu, so just letting you know. Vegetarian friendly. Wow, look at that. It looks so soft. You don't even need a knife to cut this. Mmm. Wow, wow, wow. That fish is pretty rocking. It is so melt in your mouth soft. I might actually like that like as my favorite out of all of them, but I haven't tried everything yet. Because there's also stuff like this teriyaki glazed chicken. Mm. That's a fairly uh, tender piece of chicken. I think I still like the fish better, but you know, chicken is always good. I wonder if I could bite into it. Oh, it's good. That thing is very crispy. I mean, not crispy to the point where it's gonna break your teeth. It's kind of like when you're eating Peking duck and you have the skin, you know, you eat it with the bun. So this is the skin right here, but then there's also the meat itself. It's been a long time since I've had pig in a luau, like 10 years at least. I think I'm more of a prime rib type of person. I think it would have been cool if they had it here, but roast beef, I'll still take it. Mm. That roast beef is very tender. It definitely tastes like something out of a buffet restaurant. I've had it in Las Vegas. Of course, I had it in Los Angeles as well. It's tasty, especially after you pour some of the juice on top horseradish, very classic, solid tasting roast beef. But then macaroni, also pretty classic Hawaiian food. So far I'm enjoying everything on this plate, so good. Yes, they do have a dance show as part of this dinner. So it's actually during your dinner. Oh, wow, that is so entertaining. I love it. Hey. And just a reminder, you can use these to get some drinks up there at the bar. You know, I don't drink alcohol that often, but with something like this in Hawaii, I actually enjoy it, it's pretty cool. And of course you have to have your desserts as part of your meal if you are into healthy stuff. There's a seasonal fresh fruit platter. Looks like they have everything from the pineapples to mangoes, strawberries. They have pretty much everything on this. Wow, this is a huge fruit platter. And then if you like this, coconut halpia, which is a very classic Hawaiian dessert. It's pretty much like a coconut jello in some ways. And then this one is a chocolate dobash cake. Very chocolatey looks like. You gotta have your ice cream as well. They got all the ice cream here, strawberry sorbet, and then we have vanilla gelato, it looks like. And uh, let's see, oh, down here you have all of these toppings that you can put on top, like rainbow sprinkles, stars, coconut, chocolate sprinkle, rainbow sprinkle. And then if you wanna top it off, whipped cream, chocolate, caramel, Raspberry, yeah, guys, just have at it. Usually when I'm at buffets, I don't really get fruits that often because back in LA, it's kind of lousy sometimes, but here in Hawaii, I think it's gonna be pretty safe to eat. Seriously, Hawaii has some of the freshest, most amazing fruits here. Like more buffets, I really wish that they can have fruits that are this sweet. This makes me want to eat fruits more often, actually. And now it is time for the show, and the VIP gets to go in first to get seated. So I'm telling you, there's a lot that's involved with the VIP package. It's really the way to go. I am so excited to see this. Oh, wow. It looks like I am here. I know it's kind of hard to see in the dark, the first four rows are reserved for the VIP, since I am VIP. I'm gonna have a good seat tonight. 
This is really a bona fide show. So in this amphitheater, which is about 750 seats, you're gonna watch a beautiful, entertaining 70 minute show. And afterwards, there's gonna be a meet and greet with the cast. So don't go anywhere, guys, because I gotta show you that. Now, I'm pretty sure you're gonna to wanna to meet them because they're pretty awesome from what I heard. excited <laughs> yeah definitely got to get a photo with mr. Michael Jackson himself oh yeah I gotta say this was really one of the most amazing things that I've ever done in all of Hawaii so yes if you are in Honolulu and you're looking for a good dinner and a show Rockahula is truly the rockin thing so yes you got to come here I'm telling you just the show itself is so worth it Go to the video description link so that you can see more details about Rockahula. So yes, big thumbs up. I enjoyed it. Food was great and the entertainment, wow, off the hook. On day two, I headed over to Macaulay Buffet, which is what many people say is the best all-you-can-eat Asian buffet in Honolulu. Here you'll find AYCE, sushi, and Korean barbecue, along with many other Asian foods. Now doesn't that sound pretty amazing? So it looks like it starts right here with the soups. You get two kinds of soup. One is the spicy beef soup, which is this right here. And then this one is the seaweed soup. Yeah, so this is definitely Korean. Had this many times. And over here is white rice. All of these are the side dishes. In Korean, it's banchan. Up there is the radish. This is the kimchi. This is garlic stems, I believe. And this is marinated lettuce. And that is spinach, a spicy squid. And got some peppers and some tofu. And this is a dried fish. Yes, and then we have squid right here. And some fruits, pineapple, oranges, and some assorted jello. And that right there is uh, garlic, onion, lettuce. This is all for the Korean barbecue. And then this is the meat section. Looks like they have a good selection here. A uh, pork chow. And then we have up here, it looks like it's a hot dog. Uh, cut sausage, something like that. And some shrimp and marinated pork shoulder. To the right of that, we have some marinated chicken. It might be teriyaki chicken, I'm not sure. That one is bulgogi, which is marinated sliced ribeye. And that one is outside skirt steak. And beef rib fingers, finger meat. This one is the seasoned ribeye. Oh, this is king right here. This is marinated karbi. I can't believe they have this here. Moving on to some hot foods, we have here japchae, popular Korean food. And this one is the fried rice of some sort. And we have salmon. Yeah, is that salmon? Okay, salmon and ahi belly in here. And also steamed mussels. 
Moving on to some more hot foods. This is house fried chicken. So they do have KFC here. And they have some baked barbecue pork belly. Look at all that thick sauce on it. As well as some steamed short ribs. And then this is pretty much all the pokey, raw fish, sushi section, beginning with adamami. And we have here uh, squid. And this one is octopus. This one is uh, marlin. That's pretty cool, interesting. Some salmon poke and ahi tuna poke. And now we're moving on to the Japanese section. This is uh, spicy tuna rolls. Yep, I think it is. And some nigiri. Oh, they're replacing it, very good. Got some shrimp and some egg, which is tamago. We got some crab meat. And then salmon, which I always love, and some tuna, oh yeah, along with some ginger and wasabi. So this one is seared tuna, and this one is marlin, which I don't see in too many buffets back in LA. Salmon sashimi, and tuna sashimi. And this looks like a tempura section. It's kind of hidden, so don't miss it. You have the shrimp tempura and assorted vegetable tempura and then you have your sauce too. And I think that's pretty much everything. And I heard that this seafood here, especially the fish, is uh, locally sourced. It comes from the fish market, so it does come fresh into this restaurant. So it's pretty high quality from what people have been telling me, which is good. Okay, I'm digging that. Wow, how can I describe what that tastes like? It's almost like eating, hmm, maybe albacore in some ways. Like something along those lines. It's very soft and it just melts in your mouth. And I'm pretty sure that the piece of salmon here will also melt in my mouth, some salmon sashimi. I feel that salmon is always the way to go. Whether you're at a sushi restaurant or at a buffet, that salmon taste is always so pleasant to have at every occasion. Then when you have a lot of soft foods, you also want to balance it with maybe something that's crunchy, like a shrimp tempura. Mm, pleasant, very crispy. And so don't miss the tempura, because like I said, it's kind of hidden on the side by that buffet bar. I'm more of a nigiri person than a sushi roll person, because nigiri, they usually put the better cuts of fish on top of it. So that's why I usually get it. So my consensus is that so far, the fish is pretty solid. I think you guys are actually gonna like it. I mean, considering it's buffet food, you're not gonna eat something that's like out of a $200 sushi restaurant, but it's actually very nice tasting. And when you're here in Hawaii, you're gonna get a lot of fresh fish. We're gonna get some of the best raw fish sushi outside of Japan. For round number two, we're gonna get barbecue. Okay, definitely gonna get skirt steak, one of my favorite cuts of meat, as well as finger meat, which is really good. This is very expensive, so you got to get your money's worth on this one. The art of eating at a buffet. All right, let's get this started. You can cook the meats however way you like, but I usually like to start with the non-marinated meats going on, such as the pork belly, and then the finger meat, Carby, I'm gonna put it on just because it takes a while for this one to cook. So yeah, this will be done about like 10 minutes later, I guess after you flip it on both sides. And up there at the buffet line, they will provide you with the sauces, the bean paste, as well as the sweet soy sauce. And this is the uh, sesame oil with salt and uh, pepper. And do come with some clothes that you don't mind getting smelly because it's gonna smoke up. It's gonna make your clothes smell. The pork belly cooks pretty quickly and it's very thin, so I expected it was gonna cook pretty fast. Very thin pork belly. And the thing is you wanna cook it all the way till it gets kind of crispy. That's the way you're supposed to see pork belly. And it looks like the finger meat is done as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and dip it in this salt and sesame oil too. I feel that that one works good with just about any beef. 
Oh, that's definitely beef, yeah. That one almost tastes like eating um, short ribs in some ways. It tastes just like uh, the Korean barbecue I've had in LA, actually, in a lot of those all-you-can-eat Korean barbecue restaurants. Wow, that's actually a little different than I expected. So this carby, I feel, is more tender than the ones that I've had back in LA, and it's kind of sweet, too. Yeah, so it's a very interesting tasting carby. If you want a pro tip suggestion, always try to eat more of the carby short ribs because that's really where the money is at. And it actually tastes pretty good here. I know some of you guys like to fill up on the barbecue and the sushi, but it does look like they have some pretty killer hot foods up there. So that's why I got salmon collar, some barbecue pork belly, japchae, and even this, this beef right here. Looks so good, doesn't it? I think I might be done after round number three because I had a very big lunch this morning and I'm still trying to, you know, digest it. But so far I've had a blast with all these foods that I had. And yes, I did decide to get some of the soup because this beef soup looks pretty good. Wow, that soup is so comforting. It really hits your soul when you eat it. This is, yeah, this is really bonafide Korean soup right here. I don't think I've seen this barbecue pork belly before. This looks pretty interesting. You know what it tastes like? It tastes something like out of an American or a Texas barbecue restaurant, but with sliced pork belly. So kind of think uh, East meets West with this dish. That sauce is spicy, wow. But the pork belly itself is so tender, it just melts when you bite into it. This is good actually. Yeah, you should definitely get this one. I, I like it. This is to me is like a surprise hit of the night. It's not just about raw fish seafood, but they have cooked seafood too. Very rich tasting. I like salmon collar. Yellowtail collar I really like too. It's been a while since I've actually had that. But I heard a lot of great things about the short rib, the braised short rib, which is their Kaibi Jin. Wow. Okay. That one is pretty awesome. It's so soft, you don't even need a knife. This thing will just fall apart like when you pick it up. That's how tender it is. I'm surprised. I don't remember when was the last time. I think this is the first time I've had Kabi Jim in a buffet of any kind, whether it's Japanese or Korean. But they make it pretty good here. It's actually better than some of the Kabi Jims I've had in other restaurants. I'm not joking. So yeah, this is one item you should definitely get at the buffet line. I think this is one of the standouts. This has been a very enjoyable Asian buffet for me. You get 40 different selections for about $40 dinner time, and there's a lot of customers in here. So yeah, it's a neighborhood favorite around here, and I can see why. I mean, whenever you have sushi and barbecue on the menu, you're gonna have a pretty good time. On day three, I visited the historic Chinatown in Honolulu. This is one of the oldest Chinatowns in the US and worth visiting if you are into Chinese-themed shops. I always like visiting Chinatown, so this is pretty fun. This is one of the spots in Chinatown that you should check out. It's an open square. Wow. This uh, market sells a whole bunch of meats, seafoods, veggies. What on earth is that? It's all by itself in this little fish tank. Meat and seafood markets are things that you're gonna find a plenty in Chinatown. So if you want some really nice fresh produce, whether it's seafood or beef or pork or vegetables, then Chinatown is a place you can definitely consider. As with many Chinatowns, you're also gonna see a lot of stores that specializes in jewelry and antique items, such as this one right here, DDJ Hawaii. I'm not super into jewelry, but from time to time, I do like to walk into these stores to see what kind of stuff they sell in every type of jewelry store. It looks very nice for sure. If you're into antiques and a lot of jades, um, necklaces, yeah, definitely come to Chinatown. I would say that this is uh, kind of a medium-sized Chinatown, not the biggest Chinatown I've seen, but definitely not a small one either. It runs for a few blocks in all directions. There are places to eat, places to shop, or just about everything. So if you are into anything Chinese, 
and you are into history, then yes, visit one of the oldest Chinatowns in America. And another spot that is really worth checking out, especially in Waikiki, is the Hilton Hawaiian Village. This is a hotel, but at the same time, it's a lot more than that because this is a hotel that's right next to a very lovely beach. And there's a very big outdoor shopping center here full of gift shops and a lot of restaurants and all that great stuff. So definitely a spot to check out. Wow, this kind of reminds me of something out of like San Diego or Newport Beach, these types of outdoor shops and restaurants. And by the way, I have been to Hilton Hawaiian Village before. This was back in high school when I first came to Hawaii. I don't really remember too much of it, so I'm kind of seeing everything almost like first time. Today's a little bit of a cloudy day. Sometimes when you come during the dawn summer seasons, you can expect to see scattered rain showers. And it looks like the shopping center kind of spits out here. But to the left, oh, it's a teppanyaki. I remember when this used to be Benihana. But then you can cross this and you'll get to even more shops on this side. How fun, all right. Let's see what's around here. Stores that sell ukulele guitars. Do any of you know how to play this? I guess now you're pretty much headed into the main pool area of Hilton Hawaiian Village. And the pool will also spit you out to the ocean. Now I remember all this, very nice. So there is one hotel that you should stay at in Waikiki. I think this is gonna be overall the best experience because you have everything here. I think this is the pool area. All right, everybody's swimming right over here. And then right next to the pool, if you want to go out to the beach, see what I tell you, it's right here. Right here, right behind the Hilton Hawaiian Village. How sweet. Even though today is kind of a cloudy day, but still, it's, it's gorgeous. Uh, you know, when it's way too sunny, it beams down on my face and, you know, you could get sunburned and all that. I think this is the perfect weather. It's like kind of breezy. As if the beach were not enough, there's also a lagoon to the right. This lagoon is almost like swimming in a lake. I see people actually paddling out here. It's in the west side of the hotel. Looks like you got three swimming options. You have the hotel pool, you have the lagoon, you have the beach right there. Oh, what is this? Is this like a dock? Okay, maybe I'll go all the way to the end so I can see how the hotel looks like from there. Look at that in the background. That is such a good view of Waikiki Beach as well as Hilton Hawaiian Village. That is definitely a place to stay at. Like I said, they got everything there and it's so conveniently located next to this beautiful ocean. Now it is dinner time. I went to Domo Cafe which specializes in sushi in a casual atmosphere. This is one of the more affordable sushi restaurants you'll find in Honolulu, and the fish is pretty fresh. So if you are a pretty big eater with a big appetite, then this is the sushi spot for you. And I heard that this one is shipped from Japan, this hamachi. Yeah, this is authentic Japanese fish he's cutting up. And for this one, they're gonna make it into the abari, which is flame-torched sushi. So if you guys like poke, they do have some pretty nice poke bowls here as well. And since the quality of the fish is pretty top notch, I'm assuming this is definitely a place you should get poke bowl. It's gonna cook the fish just a little bit on top and it's gonna have a wonderful smoky flavor. I've had this, it's quite delicious. And I wanna mention that the tuna is bought fresh every business day from the tuna auction. So there's no skimping on quality here. Oh yeah, that looks so good. And it looks healthy too. Oh, that salmon just melts in your mouth. It's so fatty. And the, the topping of the garlic paste really adds a delicious garlic flavor to it, which I always like. And it is sweet too, because there's the, the yield sauce that's over it. Torching the fish really brings out the oily, fatty flavor. Don't miss out on this one. It's been a while since I've had the opery and it is a must get at this restaurant. And the sashimi salad, definitely one of the healthiest things that you'll find on the menu. 
a good alternative if you're not into rice. It's fresh, it's crispy, and it works so wonderfully with the sashimi. These slices are pretty large too, I gotta admit. All right, that's my first bite of hamachi, yellowtail, at this restaurant. It is so good. It's like rich, it's buttery. And I told you that it's imported from Japan, right? Yeah, so this is real yellowtail from Japan, which is always a big plus. I mean, anything from Japan, especially if it comes from the Toyosu fish market, is good. Now, this is definitely good enough for one meal. Yeah, this, I would highly recommend it. And this poke bowl looks Kind of different than the ones that I have in Los Angeles. But always a good place to get poke when you are in Hawaii. Wow, that's like so classic poke. That shoyu sauce, and it's not terribly strong either. I've had the sauce where it was like way too salty or, you know, something about it was a little bit off, but this is very pleasant tasting. Mr. Wu gets it from the tuna auction every day. So it is as fresh as it gets. So yes, get the tuna in sushi, sashimi, or poke bowl. You're not gonna go wrong with it. So I would recommend get the domo one. Unless you're only into one kind of fish, like the ahi tuna, which by all means, get it if you like it. But if you want some variety and taste, then I would say get the domo, because you're getting a little bit of everything. I don't even know where to begin with this whole sushi platter. This is, like I said, on the catering menu, which can feed at easily at least two people, if not three people. Whatever you do, don't miss out on the tuna here. This is really the go-to item. But then salmon is something I always feel is something I enjoy in every kind of sushi restaurants, and even at buffets, too. It's really a delicious fatty salmon flavor. What do you think I should do next? This huge piece of California roll? Look at my finger. That's pretty big, right? Once you put it in your mouth, it's gonna take up all the space, I guarantee it. Classic tasting California roll. And I feel like I'm gonna really be touched by eating the yellowtail, oh yeah. Very fresh from Japan. That's a good sign, huh? Okay, we got the shrimp here. I mean, I like uh, sweet shrimp better than the regular shrimp, but I'll still take the regular shrimp. I would say if you're a really big eater, you should just get this whole thing and try to finish it off. My record is 35 pieces. So yes, if I didn't have these other things around me, I could actually finish this whole thing off because I've done it in the past. So this is enough for one very big eater. And I'm very surprised. I mean, everything that I've had here has been very tasty and it's really rocked my world. Day four begins with a trip to Helena Hawaiian Foods. This is Yelp's highest rated Hawaiian restaurant in Honolulu, and for good reason. Here you'll find some of the best ancient and modern Hawaiian foods on the island. So of course, I had to check it out. All right guys, so this is Craig right here, the owner at Helena's Hawaiian Food. How's it going, man? How's it? All right, great. we're gonna be trying some awesome Hawaiian food today, right? Yep, I'm gonna bring it out for you guys and uh, show you what it's all about. And one of the coolest things that you're gonna see in this kitchen is the hanging short ribs. They pretty much dry these short ribs before they deep fry it and they serve it, which means that it is one of the most unique ways of making short ribs that you're not gonna find in too many Hawaiian or even Korean restaurants. And that is one of the reasons why this restaurant is so good. So it looks like we got a pretty good spread here, Craig. Uh, yeah, so beginning with this one. That's luau squid. It's um, squid in name only. It's actually octopus. So the green part, the Hawaiians grew the taro and that's the taro leaf. <clears throat> then they dough for the octopus and then they crack the coconut. Very ancient Hawaiian. Got it. And 
That's called Lomi Salmon. And that's more contemporary Hawaiian. When the missionaries came, they brought their, their own vegetables, tomatoes and onions, and the salted salmon came uh, it came salted because there was no refrigeration on the sailing ships and so they combined them together and now we call it lomi salmon. That one is our complimentary um, coconut dessert called haupia. We give it with every meal so long as we have some. Okay, oh. this is lao lao. This is a very ancient Hawaiian food also. The leaf on the outside is inedible. It's called the tea leaf. And that tea leaf is the Hawaiian equivalent of tin foil. So they didn't have different vessels to um, cook things in so they would wrap this which inside is the taro leaf some pork and some fish beef stew is just um, it's, it's just regular it's just beef stew but it's our version of it and um, you got to try it everybody loves it yep and this one is pretty blue pig is the is the is is the the pig that that is done with um, kiabi wood and and lava rocks we do it in that style and um, it's just shredded pork it has its own flavor then here come the Chinese. The Chinese showed up and they brought their long rice. So this is a more contemporary Hawaiian food. You know, so as you can see, the missionaries came, the Chinese came. So Pacific Rim cooking was um, happening before Roy and um, Alan Wong showed up. Poi is the staple of the Hawaiians. And it's just like uh, you eating rice or potatoes. Um, it's better for you than that. Um, poi is... Uh, Hypoallergenic babies can eat it and um, it sterilizes itself so it can be left out of refrigeration. Pipi kaula, that's pipi kaula. Pipi, it means cow, bovine, and kaula means string. And we, he showed you the video of us hanging it up and so we hang up, you know, 300 pounds a day and we sell it all. Last but not least is fried butterfish. It is a seasonal item and they're pulling less butterfish out of the ocean every year, so sometimes we don't have it due to supply, but um, everybody likes it fried up crispy. I think I'm gonna start with this one, the, the luau squid, right? Luau squid is, a, is such an ancient Hawaiian food, so it's a good one to start with. Okay, and you it said- It looks crazy, but um, you just have to open up your mind and, and, and just enjoy it. Wow. Is, it's it, like is it what you expected when you looked at it? A little bit sweet, a little bit, you know, it's... Yeah, I do notice that's a little sweet and it's very uh, melt-in-your-mouth, kind of mushy. But it's good though, I like that sensation. Yeah. That's the coconut milk. So. You know, I was just going to say that, I do taste the coconut flavor in it. Yes. Yeah, it kind of gives a little bit of a tropical feel to it. Right, well, the Hawaiians use what were around them, you mm -hmm. know, so, so that was one of the uh, ingredients that were, that was around them. It's very refreshing. Very colorful bowl, and you're supposed to kind of just eat it with everything, right? Yeah. Some people even put it in their poi, you know, so. Oh, seriously? Yeah, to kick the poi up. Okay. Because the poi is kind of bland, and if you eat it by itself, that's what you're gonna get, something bland. But if you eat it in conjunction with other things, dip your food in it, it's a good way to um, get into poi, because poi has a little bit of an acquired taste to it. Speaking of poi, I'm gonna be trying poi for the first time today. Right on. You know, I can see what you mean when you say it's an acquired taste. Yeah, I would say that it's kind of, has a little bit of a sour taste. Uh, it's definitely very creamy. I know that for sure. Fresh poi can actually be sweet. It can actually be on the sweet side. This is their dried, deep fried carby. You like it? I do actually. Right on. Wow. I feel like I'm eating dry aged carby that's been deep fried. That's exactly it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very, um, it's very beefy tasting. It's, uh, you know, like, um, I love the oiliness in there. And then uh, it's a little bit crispy too since it's been deep fried. Right. Craig was saying, and this is a pro tip, you just dip it like this and eat it, right? There, and then the, the, the oil and the, um, the protein and the, it all blends in with the, with the poi, the starch. Tastes better. Okay. Makes, it, makes everything taste better. Yeah. I see what you're saying. So if you want to make the poi, I guess, a little bit more uh, flavorful, just take this, which is oily and just full of beefy flavor, and you dip it in, 
almost like dipping, uh, I guess, nachos in cheese and you just eat it just like that. But I also heard a lot of great things about the Lao Lao here as well. So I think this is my second time trying Lao Lao. Mm. Mm. I like chili water on almost everything, so I would throw chili water on the Lao Lao. Where's the chili water? Right here. All right, let's do it. A little bit. Pro tip, right there. Yeah, you should put that on. Yeah. This the more the better. Man. It is. Yeah. If you like heat. That tea leaf is like so soft and has like a very pleasant bitterness to it. Along with the uh, softness of the pork inside. I feel this is like a mom's home cooking type of dish. It's really earthy. Earthy? Yeah. Even though this isn't an ancient Hawaiian food, but people love it's, it. This, there was beef around, so we made a stew. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mmm. Oh, it's good. It's like a tomato sauce. Yeah, tomato based stew. Okay. Regardless of whether it's very traditional ancient Hawaiian or not, I feel this. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, this one. It, everybody likes stew and rice, so it's mm -hmm. so it's it's good. Okay, so this one is definitely more of an ancient Hawaiian food, right? Correct. Let's say ancient Hawaiian food. Okay, another pro tip. You gotta get some more poi. Woo! And then you just eat it like this, right? Yeah, try it like that. You'll see how it, it makes everything taste better, in fact. Put them together. Yeah. Okay, so if you eat it like that, now I feel that the poi is definitely more... Palatable, right? Palatable. Yeah. Yeah. Now by itself, I can see how some people find it difficult. They actually will just leave it. They'll just leave it? They'll just leave it because sometimes we get busy, we don't always have a good chance to explain how to do everything or how you know how how it would be best for them to try it you know so I can just eat a whole bowl of point myself and it's really? fine but it's um, but when you it's not it's not something that's common so you have to get used to it okay Ooh, this looks pretty good so this one is your famous uh, butterfish right butterfish like I said it is seasonal so um, and every year they, they they fish less butterfish out of the ocean every year the ones that you can't eat, you just pull out, but then, you know, but the ones that are really fried crispy, you can just chomp them. Like right around here, yes. you can see where you can see which ones you can eat and which ones you can't. You know what I feel like this almost reminds me of? It almost feels like a soft shell crab, but a fish version of it. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that, yeah. This is amazing. What'd you say this one was again? It's chicken long rice. We, we do it the right way. We boil our chicken bones for, you know, eight, ten hours to get to get a good, like, nice stock on it. And, yeah. Um, and the noodles are so thick, too. They're, like, really thick. Is it glass noodles? Yeah. Okay. Thick glass noodles. They just call them long rice noodles. Mm -hmm. Oh. Craig, this has been a wonderful experience so far. All right. I'm glad you enjoyed it. So this one is a halpia, and this is a famous uh, coconut, kind of like a jello. I could come back just to eat this one. The halpia is great. Not too sweet, just right. Yeah. This, good, good job. This is like one of the most amazing coconut jello desserts I've had, the halpia. This is such a fabulous way to end off the meal. Yeah. Yeah, so if you guys want, once again, very traditional, uh, home-style Hawaiian food, like mom, grandma's home cooking, this is the restaurant you gotta come to. So like I said, Yelp's highest rated Hawaiian restaurant in Honolulu. So that in itself is an amazing achievement, and it has my super big thumbs up. And everybody else in this restaurant, they love it here as well. Later that night, I attended the Star of Honolulu, which is the biggest dinner cruise and show in Hawaii. Not only was the entertainment fun, but the food was pretty top notch. So if you like cruises, then this is my top pick. And just letting you know that not all the meal packages are the same. So there are three. One is the buffet, and then the next one is the one with chicken, crab, and steak. And then there's the top of the line, which I am on. Looks great. 
And what's cool is that they have a fruit and cheese bar up here. Look at how much fruit is on this one. You got everything from watermelon to grapes to, of course, the pineapple. Ooh, so delicious. And then here, you got the assortment of cheese, which is cheddar, Swiss, pepper jack, brie, blue cheese. I mean, there's a lot of things on here. There's no shortage of cheese on here. And then, of course, you got to have your crackers as well. You know, I don't really eat cheese that often, but since it's all here, might as well just get some. Looks pretty good, right? Almost kind of like something to snack on before the main course comes out. That's always enjoyable. Good cheese, nice crackers. When you come to Hawaii, they have a lot of awesome fruits here. Very tasty and very sweet. Those grapes are bursting with flavor. It's like so candy sweet. The cheese and fruit bar is course number one, and this is course number two, which is Hawaiian greens. Purple andive, baby romaine, grape tomatoes, house-made vinaigrette, awesome stuff. Let's try some of this really fine looking salad here. Mm, very punchy. I like that vinaigrette, it's, it's sweet. Sweet and kind of creamy. So with this package, you get two coupons for a premium drink, which you can get from the premium section on the menu. And you can also have an option of getting your photo taken. This is an additional charge, but I think I'm gonna do it tonight because I'm in such an aloha spirit. Reach out and put the helping hand. Oh! You can feel aloha. Hey! Aloha. You gotta feel aloha. Aloha. Oh. Wow, they're right in front of me. That's so cool. Here's the third course. This is the one pound whole Nova Scotia Maine lobster. So it is very fresh lobster, very delicious with lemon, clarified butter and citrus ponzu, which is that to the right, nice. If you guys wanna do the vegan route, they do have this zucchini Napoleon with lomi tomato, tofu and asparagus with balsamic reduction. That actually sounds really good. And here's the other vegan option. This is the vine ripened tomato with rice pilaf with pesto sauce. This actually sounds really good too. And the great thing is the servers can actually crack this thing for you. Yeah, I don't feel like getting my hands dirty today. I think I just would like them to do. Oh, wow. It's already cut in half. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow, that's so cool. Okay. Oh, oh, wow. It breaks so easily. I didn't even know that. Maybe I could have even done it myself. Wow. That is like as good as lobster can get. I don't have too much more words. You can tell it's fresh. You don't even need to dip it into the butter or the ponzu. It's really that good. I mean, I'm still gonna do it anyways, but it's so good that on its own, it's like magical. Words can't describe, it's just so perfect. But I still got the claws, oh yeah. Like I said, they have live jazz entertainment. You must take the A train to go should you know if in Harlem. You see that in the distance? That is the sunset right there. Yeah, I know today is kind of rainy, it's super cloudy, but still it looks pretty good actually. But all year round, you know, when the sun sets, you can see that magical moment as part of this cruise. And this is course number four. This is the tenderloin of beef with uh, sweet Madeira wine sauce. It's cooked to perfection. I think it's cooked to about medium rare. I think it's so soft. It's almost like a, like a pillow, but it bounces, jiggly. It's delicious. I like the sauce over too. It's that kind of a peppery sauce. What about the mashed potatoes? This looks pretty cool. It's like a purple colored. 
I don't think I've ever had a dish where I had a combination of regular potatoes and sweet potato. No less sweet potato from Japan. That's pretty cool. I like it. And of course there are the veggies inside too. Wow. And then I finally come to the fifth course. Wow, that was pretty quick. So now this is the Hawaiian mango mousse cake, freshly baked by Elvin's Bakery with white chocolate garnish. Perfect. It's like the sweetest ending to a really great meal. Uh, it's a little bit raining up here, but uh, when it's not raining, it's definitely super, super nice up here. And the breeze is, wow, so nice, so refreshing. And you can see all the city lights in the background all along Honolulu, Waikiki. So be sure to come up here too, after dinner or even before. This is the 65 years of Aloha show that ends off this whole program. Stuff. As part of the show, it looks like the, there are dancers on the stage, but then there are also other hula dancers that are all across this dining room. So it's this whole atmosphere is just full of all this just dancing right now. See? Everybody's involved. They're all dancing. Yes. After three hours, it is over. Yes, so I'm about to disembark right now. Really enjoyable, wow. It was really a packed program and the food was amazing. Uh, seriously, one of the best dinner cruise foods that I've, I've had. Like, I, there's nothing here that I didn't like. So yeah, definitely get the lobster package. That one is like, wow. Just the lobster itself, that was like my favorite thing here. Day five begins early with breakfast at Duke's Waikiki restaurant. They have one of the most popular all-you-can-eat breakfast buffets in Honolulu. Plus, you get a scenic view of the ocean. All around, a pretty good experience, right? So let's begin with the hot foods. I see five in the station. We got the homestyle potatoes. Nice and crunchy, looks very good. And this is scrambled eggs. Very classic American food from what I'm seeing. And then we also got some sausages, like chicken sausage and Portuguese sausage. I don't know if I had a Portuguese sausage before. And moving down here, coconut syrup along with some maple syrup. And yes, this is for this, which is the pancake. And this is banana pancakes. Banana pancake and cinnamon French toast. Beautiful. And this is uh, bacon, Duroc bacon. Looks like in this section we have some assorted cereal. It's like original Kellogg's. Forgive me if it's kind of dark because it's kind of dark in this area. Fruit Loops. And even got milk, which you need for your cereal, obviously. And that is some yogurt, as well as some butter, house-made granola, along with some jam. Looks like here we have some of the bagels. Uh, English muffin, I'm assuming. So you can eat it by itself or you can put it in this toaster and it'll heat it up right for you. And it's all you can eat, guys. And if you want the oatmeal, they got it here. Oh yeah, so steel cut oatmeal with some candied walnuts and brown sugar and raisin and maybe some paprika as well. Still more hot foods, ham and eggs Benedict. Well, more pork cheese sausage and chicken sausage. So that's a repeat and white rice. All right, white rice for breakfast. Fried rice, breakfast fried rice, okay. And this section is pretty much all of the muffins as well as cold foods like fruits and salad. The coconut bread pudding, that sounds good. I think I'm definitely gonna get that. Uh, carrot muffin, banana macadamia nut muffins. Yes, I'm definitely getting that. And then all this is the salad, uh, cucumber, and also some carrots, and then also grapes, along with papaya seed dressing, 
And that is, uh, let's see, I think that's honeydew or? Yeah, honeydew. Honeydew, okay. And this one, mixed greens. And then these are all your toppings like raisins and candy, candied walnuts and some uh, dried cranberry, I think. Yeah. Yes, as well as your lemon and lime. And then uh, sunflower seeds right there as well as grapefruits, banana, and oranges, along with uh, watermelon slices. And then we got some papaya right there. And then the last few up here, let's see, cantaloupe, I believe. And this is the pineapples. Check this out, chilled plates. Oh yeah, you can get it chilled if you want to. That's pretty cool. And to also let you know that the brunch buffet also comes with coffee and tea. Everything else you pretty much have to order separately on the menu, uh, but they do have you know everything else on the menu if you want something other than what's up there. Pancakes, which is banana pancakes, and it does come with a coconut syrup. Oh, that tastes so good. So this uh, pancake is uh, banana flavored, and then when you pour that coconut syrup on it, it's a really tropical, fruity tasting pancake. And these are kind of like small circular pancakes, so it's not like something you would get at Denny's or IHOP. I think it's really nice. Good portion, which I don't have to get full just eating the pancakes. And for French toast lovers, they got it up there too. And this one has my coconut sauce as well. It's a very classic tasting French toast. Once again, not terribly big. It's individually portioned so that you can try more up of what's up there in the buffet line. But I definitely do have to get my eggs. That's very typical breakfast for me. It's like scrambled eggs. I don't know what else to really say about it. It's not like a unusually out there type of scrambled eggs. It's just really good solid American scrambled eggs. But you know what else completes everything is sausage. I can't tell the difference between this sausage and regular sausage. All I know is that it's very savory. I like sausages in general, so it's gonna be all good with me. Wow, that's crunchy. Off to a good start so far. Can't wait to try the omelets. So it looks like they make all the omelets back here. There's no omelet station out there, but this you can order, all you can eat. Back here in your kitchen, this is where they make all of their all you can eat brunch foods as well as anything that's on the menu. Why get one omelet when you can get three? Remember, this is all you can eat. Uh, this one to the left is the Kama Aina. The omelet is pretty much meat lover's omelet. There's a lot of different meats going on in there. This is the Denver omelet. I know for sure it has cheese and has some veggies in there as well. And this one is purely vegetable omelet, which I actually like a lot. Man, I don't even know where to start. Maybe I'll just start with the heaviest one, the kamaaina. It's very uh, meaty and cheesy. If you're into meat omelets, then this one, I think you're really gonna like. Believe it or not, I'm actually more of a vegetable in the omelet type of person. But I can definitely still appreciate a very, like bacon, very ham-filled omelet if it's made really right. I've heard of a Denver omelet before, but I never knew exactly what's inside. Looks like there's cheese, ham, bell pepper going on. Oh, I could definitely taste the cheese in that. So this one is a good mixture between vegetables and meats. How many omelets do you think you guys can eat? Drop that comment, I would love to hear your story. Oh yeah. A lighter tasting omelet. This one is full of vegetables and it has um, cheese in there too. Good, hearty, American breakfast food which I don't need that often, so that's why when I come to restaurants like this, I have a very good experience. So yeah, if you want all-you-can-eat brunch food here in Waikiki, then Duke's is 
definitely the place to go. To walk off the calories, I made a stop at Ala Moana Center, which is another one of the top attractions in Honolulu. It is the biggest outdoor shopping mall in America. So if you like to shop, then this is the mall you have to visit in Honolulu. Probably take you at least two hours to get through everything. This outdoor shopping center looks like many of the ones I've seen in Southern California, like at the Topanga Mall, as well as in Irvine. Uh, see Newport Beach. The rain is kind of picking up a little bit. And this mall is not just casual shopping. They have a lot of fancy designer stores as well. So if you have money to spend on this kind of stuff, have at it. Wow, this is a very interesting store. It's like a candy store. Whoa, okay. All the sights and sounds is just so colorful in here. It makes me want to be a kid all over again. It reminds me of something out of Universal City Walk or something out of Las Vegas. A huge store full of candy and different merchandise. Some of it brings back a lot of childhood memories like cartoons and cereals. So this is definitely a family friendly spot. You see all that? That is the parking lot or only one parking lot out of a few on this facility. That is huge. This is almost like coming into Disneyland. And just like with any mall, you gotta have your food court as well. And this one looks very big. This is the biggest mall food court I've ever seen. Wow, it is huge. Huge, huge shoes. It's almost like the size of a first story of a mall. There's gotta be at least like, what, 30, 40 shops in here? A lot of options to eat. It's like shoulder to shoulder in here. After all, it is lunchtime, so it is gonna be very packed in here. I see stores that I've seen before because they're chains and franchises. Some that I've not because they're more local. Uh, yeah, Panda Express, definitely one that I recognize. So they have foods of every single kind in here. I'm not gonna have time to eat here today, but maybe in the future when I return to Honolulu, I might do a multi-part series on the food court food here. Doesn't that sound so exciting? I think you pretty much get the point. This is a very big shopping center. You can spend half a day here shopping and eating. Of course, you do need money in order to shop at these stores, but you could certainly window shop. That's free. The night ended with the highest rated teppanyaki restaurant in Honolulu at Tanaka of Tokyo. If you love seafood and premium steaks cooked at your table, along with some nice table tricks, then this is certainly the restaurant to eat at. It's quite an experience. So we have two sauces. We have the ginger sauce and we have the mustard sauce. Mustard is for the steak and the ginger is for the vegetables. Yeah, seafoods as well. Too. And seafoods. Yeah, yeah. And the course meal comes with the salad, with the house dressing, as well as the miso soup. Looks pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah. Salad, always a good way to start off. Mm, very fresh. And I always like this ginger dressing that they put over it. It's like the best type of dressing. Hits the spot. Traditional ways to pick it up and you drink it like that. Pro tip. <laughs> Whoa, all right. Thank you. We got our Super Mario mushrooms, yeah? Super Mario mushrooms, my type. There we go, help this girl big and strong. And then bean sprouts. Bean sprouts, right? Yes. In Japanese, we call it moyashi. Moyashi. Feel free to lean forward, yeah? <laughs> That is some ninja cutting skills. All right, here's the famous fire trick. It's gonna make a, if I'm correct, he's gonna make a volcano shape. Uh huh. Pour that in there. Gasoline. All right. Woo! Oh, even more. Yeah, kind of small. Let's try to make it bigger. Yeah, All right. Okay. Woo! Oh. Watch out! Yeah, special tonight. Eyebrows half off. Yeah. That is beautiful. Yeah. Hawaiian barbecue. <laughs> Look at that. So guys, that's basically a choo-choo train. Right, and we also have our lava lava. Lava lava? Mr. Lava Lava. I love you, you love me. Yeah. Wow, what's gonna happen here? Damn. Woo! 
Uh oh, look at that. It's boiling. So these are the vegetable appetizers as part of the course meal. Bean sprouts as well as mushrooms and bell pepper. And that is the shrimp. Another very popular teppanyaki appetizer. High sodium. High sodium, that's right. MSG. MSG. Oh yeah. So of course you're definitely gonna get the show when you sit at the table, but it's not just about show. They wanna make sure that the food is seasoned and cooked right, so you're definitely gonna get something that's high quality and really good tasting, which is important. Yeah, appetizer shrimp, and this one goes into this sauce. Yep. Mmm, nice and crunchy. I like it. It's a nice tasting shrimp. I mean, a lot of these foods are fairly simple that you can make at home too, but what really makes it taste the way it does is the heat of the Tepan grill. That's what makes the difference. Watch guys, watch, watch. Oh, did you catch that? It happened too fast, huh? <laughs> Woo, that's the Aloha spirit. And that is the whole mountain of rice for the egg fried rice. This is quality entertainment. Switch. Wow. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> Grand finale. Yeah, one, two, three. Oh. 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 <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> All right. There it is. Usually when I go to Tebanyaki restaurants, I do get the steam rice, but I've never been here before, so I'm gonna try it. And it does look pretty good. Wow, that's cooked to perfection. Thank you. Yeah, props to the chef. That, that rice is so soft and it's so flavorful. Like soy saucy, garlicky, but not in an overpowering way. It's like in a very nice touch to it. Okay, we got our seafood, salmon, okay. Lobster tails. We got our lobster tails. Ooh, that looks so good. Yeah, that's the famous lobster tails, guys. Apparently, every chef has their own knife and they sharpen it themselves. It's very special to them, almost kind of like a sushi chef knife. These, this is pretty much a sampler of all the uh, good stuff that they have on the menu. I want to let you guys know there are other people at the table next to me. I'm not going to eat all this, just my portion. What? This all looks insane. Love it, love it. Once again, guys, ginger sauce, seafood. That lobster has been cooked so perfectly. It is so soft. I think it's almost to the point where you feel that the center might be a little bit raw. I mean, it isn't, but that's just how soft it is. They use really good lobster here. That's no joke. Wow, I'm impressed. I think so far the best lobster I've had in the Tebanyaki restaurant. Oh, more fire right over there. Steak. Oh yeah, filet mignon going on the grill. Top grade steak. And this is the sirloin? And also the sirloin, their famous sirloin steak. See, there's even music as part of your show too. Tebanyaki music using kitchenware. So of course the steak, you can cook it any way you like, but I usually like to get my medium, although a lot of people do get a medium rare. Both of them are good. Okay. Beautiful. That's the matzo steak. After all, we are in a steakhouse, so obviously I should be looking very forward to eating the steak, right? Incredibly juicy and tender steak. Most of the times when I've been to uh, Tebanyaki's, I've had New York steak and sometimes filet mignon. So I think this might be the first time or just in a long time I've had sirloin steak. And this is the shaker show. That's what they call it. Okay, kind of like a Japanese taiko performance. Taiko drums. Watch out, I guess we'll slip around for a couple of tables. Oh, oh, and here's the uh, teriyaki chicken with the house-made teriyaki sauce. Wow, that's, that's actually better than I thought. 
I don't order teriyaki chicken that often in, um, in a tebanyaki restaurant. Actually, I don't get chicken in general, but that one is pretty nice. You don't have to dip it in any of these dipping sauces. Very tender and a very nice house-made teriyaki sauce. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Anthony, you gotta request this guy when you come here. And as part of your meal, you can get a complimentary photo. All right. They really take their customers very seriously. You know, everything that they've experienced. So that's how much they take pride in their service here. I, I really liked it. I mean, I've been treated so well here. And like I said, the food here is really fantastic. And plus three hour free parking here. Can't get any better than that, right? Well, there you have it with my 100 hours in Honolulu, Hawaii. Out of all of these tourist spots and restaurants, which is the one you would most like to visit? Drop that comment because I would love to hear your story. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next food adventure.